Welcome everybody to Forza Horizon 5 and today we're taking a look at the 2019 Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro. Now this is part of the 5th generation that has been in production since August 2009 and it's the most successful generation of the 4Runner uh, since it was introduced in 1984 with 2021 having the highest sales in its entire history with 145,000 being sold which is yeah a huge amount uh, to be selling of a uh, you know a rather large not particularly efficient uh, off-roader but definitely more efficient than its uh, Tundra equivalent and uh, yeah this is a uh, pretty formidable uh, car in terms of off-road capability since it has the same TRD Pro package as the Tundra so you get higher ride height you get a more compliant suspension when going off-road uh, you get these big off-road tires as well which I think uh, not the same on the uh, Tundra they might well be a little bit different but yeah, you also still get the aluminium skid plate up front at 6mm thick to protect you from any rocks or any uh, debris that might get under the car. Uh, but yeah, the uh, bodywork though is completely different. The uh, weight of this is completely different and the engine is completely different to the Tundra as well. So uh, yeah, and I think the body on this is a bit more of a usable everyday kind of body on it, to be honest. Because like I said, in the Tundra review, most people do not use their pickup bed most of the time. So uh yeah, uh, but this interior wise is pretty much the same as the Tundra. The uh, dials are a little bit different, but pretty much everything else is virtually the same, being from the same manufacturer. Rear space though does seem to be a little bit better. Looks like you could, could get three adults in here, whereas in the Tundra it looked like two would be a uh, the best that you could do. So uh, yeah, slightly more spacious in the rear. Obviously it does not have a massive pickup bed, so in terms of being a workhorse this isn't going to be as good. But as like I said, an everyday vehicle where you're not going to be doing shopping or carrying luggage or anything, it's got a huge boot that is more than capable of dealing with all of that kind of stuff. Also like the fact it's got a little bit of a lip that you could sit on as well uh, and use the uh, the boot lid as a uh, kind of like a, uh, a rain cover really. And uh, yeah, nice and spacious in there. And it weighs 4,750 pounds which is a massive 890 pounds less than the Tundra but where this mainly differs is in terms of the engine as it has a 4 litre V6 engine producing 270 horsepower and 278 pounds feet of torque so yeah not a particularly powerful engine considering the size of it and yeah that is a massive 111 horsepower down on the Tundra and 123 pounds feet of torque down on that car as well so even though this does have a significant less in the amount of weight it's yeah its power is so much less that it doesn't really make up for it in terms of acceleration or top speed but still I prefer this over the uh, Tundra to be honest because like I said it's got a more practical body you, you're not going to be worrying about you know luggage or anything like that being nicked out the back like you would in a pickup truck and yeah like I said this is going to be a more usable everyday kind of vehicle and especially since you know it's going to be more efficient weighing less and having a smaller more efficient engine and yeah just generally feels like a car that I could get along with on a day to day basis unlike the Tundra which yeah considering the uh, sheer Leviathan size of that car wouldn't be particularly practical but still nonetheless let's get out onto the open road and see what this car can do Right, so like with the Tundra, obviously this is not a vehicle that's meant for acceleration or quick acceleration at that. And But yeah, we're going to still go on the drag strip and see what it can do. And then like the Tundra, we're going to go on the off-road course at the end of the runway. So yeah, let's uh, see what it can do in terms of acceleration first. So yeah, it doesn't have the best of launches. And does have quite long gearing. Because again, it's only got a six-speed automatic gearbox like the Tundra which I feel is a little bit archaic in comparison to some other cars with their 7, 8 or even 10 speed gearboxes. Yeah, still 102 I think that was there. It's still a reasonable amount of speed to be getting up to. Especially considering it still weighs a lot and it's got less than 300 horsepower. But even though the acceleration tyres and top speed on this are way uh, worse on this than the Tundra, not 16.7.615 seconds, up to 121.030 seconds and it can do 139 miles an hour so yeah that's about 1.3 seconds slower than the uh, Tundra to 60 We're talking about 3 seconds slower to 100 and it's 5 mile an hour down on the top speed 
but in all honesty because of the weight loss on this and because the engine actually sounds a little bit sportier I don't feel like this comes across as a slower car yes it is in terms of raw numbers but in terms of sensation in terms of uh, you know how much fun it is to drive it genuinely feels like a faster car now granted that is all down to my perspective and you know that is all based on an opinion but that's just the way it feels to me and yeah like I said a large part of that is down to the fact that it's got less in the way of weight so it's more truckable definitely ha better handling than the Tundra and yeah just feels a little bit more responsive and then you come down to the engine which I think sounds better as well I'll let you listen to it for a little bit you couldn't really hear the V8 even if I was quiet on the Tundra so but you can hear this engine quite easily so I'll let you listen to it for a little bit and then we'll talk about this some more Yeah, it's not the sportiest sounding V6 going, but it's definitely a bit more audible and enjoyable to listen to than the V8 in the uh, Tundra, which I can't believe I'm saying. Usually I do prefer V8s over other uh, engines, but yeah, this definitely sounds sportier and yeah, as a result, feels sportier as well. But it hasn't obviously lost any of its off-road capability despite coming across as a sportier vehicle still more than capable of dealing with any of the water, the jumps, dirt or anything like that that you throw at it. And I do like the fact that it's got that extra bit of a storage space on the roof with that roof rack, which is not something you'd be able to use on the Tundra. Obviously the Tundra has a huge amount of space for the pickup element, but obviously if you wanted even more space, you couldn't strap anything to the roof because that also has a sunroof and it's got very little way of roof space on it in general. So uh, yeah. I just prefer this overall to the Tundra. Maybe it's because I'm more, you know, it's a, this tund this Forerunner feels more more European because we generally don't get pickup trucks in the UK. But on the whole, yeah, I just think it's a better driving experience, and yeah, even though it's slower, it just doesn't feel it. So uh, yeah, on the whole, really really impressed by both of them, though, to be honest, and uh, yeah, really glad that they're both in the game. You can get this via the festival playlist, you only have to get 20 points and it's all yours. It doesn't take very long at all, it only took me about half an hour and yeah, it's well worth getting, especially since, like the Tundra, it's the first, you know, new off-road Toyota that we've ever had. So uh, yeah, really enjoyable car to drive and to be honest I actually prefer this in terms of looks to the Tundra as well. I find it's bigger headlights and slightly smaller grille, uh, a more appealing look on the front of it although the rear is a little bit on the bland side. But still, overall, a great car. Nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!